What's the longest running car model in the world? Is it the Ford Mustang? Maybe the Mercedes Benz SL? Nope. Today we're driving the 2021 Chevrolet Suburban. A little bit of a change of pace for us in more ways than you think. The Chevy Suburban first dropped way back in 1935. This OG SUV's theme has always been big. So why are we uniquely unqualified to review this latest behemoth? Uh, do you want to give a little disclosure? My heart goes pitter pat for small cars. <laughs> the Citroen 2 CD, the BMW Isetta, the 356, and I drive a Fiat 500. Even our small dog looks tinier in here. So you were sounding really snobby there until you got to the Fiat. But yeah, we do love small cars, don't we? The Suburban is, at first blush at least, very antithetical to what we usually like. So in advance, Chevrolet, I'm really sorry if some of this offends you, but <laughs> we have some thoughts. However, I'm gonna state the obvious, it's a humongous vehicle. This has dominated the large SUV segment. Between this and the Tahoe, 45% of large SUVs are Suburbans or Tahoes. So Expedition really doesn't stand a chance. Um, Land Cruiser, barely a blip. Uh, Nissan Armada, not so much. It's all about this car. So this truck, really, this ginormous SUV, is a hugely important car for Chevrolet. And speaking of huge, Suburban gains 4.1 inches of wheelbase for more interior volume than ever. But the big news mechanically with the 2021 Suburban is independent rear suspension. Uh, <laughs> you know live axles from things like dump trucks and old Ford Mustangs. The fact that a large SUV had a live axle for that long is almost inexcusable. Um, it does have some benefits. It's good for towing, it's good for rear traction if you're serious at off-roading, but for a purpose like this, there's so many benefits to having independent rear suspension. I thought I was not gonna be uncomfortable in this car. Are you uncomfortable? Well, I mean, okay, I'm just going back and forth a lot. We are on a windy road, but I think the last time we were on this road, we were in a Cayman GT4. We may have had something to do with it. You're finding these seats aren't supportive. No, I think this entire interior is very comfortable. I and just it, think it, it's your driving. <laughs> Excuse me. The hugeness of this vehicle is not to be underestimated. Black is just a tad slimming on the outside. This starts in the low 50s. As equipped, this jumps up to 84. This is the high country edition. By the ton, <laughs> this is a great deal. <laughs> the important thing about this car is it is one step before jumping off the horrible abyss of the absolute non-sexiness of the minivan. <laughs> Um, I find this interior extremely livable. Like, yeah, livable, like a New York apartment bedroom. It is about that square footage, but I could also drive to New York right now. It's so big and comfy. Um, now, you can get up to five screens in this car if you count the heads-up display. You have a huge center screen here. It's best-in-class size. Uh, you have two very big tablet-sized screens in the back. Uh, there's a lot of multimedia connectivity. You can connect gaming in there. Uh, the kids in the back can send destinations to the driver in the front, uh, and they can share content between the two screens. It's actually pretty nifty. There's a lot of cool tech in this car that would be great for road trips. You mean great for making sure your children don't bother you and shut up? Yeah, pretty much, mm -hmm. pretty much. You're about a Fiat's length away. There's so much space. You could fit like a whole galaxy of Star Wars characters. A <laughs> galaxy of Star Wars characters? What does that even mean? I, I don't think I've ever been this far away from you in a vehicle before. <laughs> this is really weird. I mean, we're used to sitting shoulder to shoulder. Yes. You're like in a different zip code. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey back there. You still alive? You wouldn't know it if I wasn't. <laughs> I think it would be a little quieter. <laughs> Stop here. Uh, you know, this kind of is what it is. It's a box on wheels, but there have been so many improvements made to this model that it makes it a lot more uh, sophisticated. It's a lot easier to drive. This has a 6.2 liter V8 with 420 horsepower. Uh, the same engine block as the Chevy Corvette, as a matter of fact. What? Does not feel like a Corvette 
because you're saddled by, you know, basically a boat behind you. But oh, it's like if a Corvette was pulling a boat. LA to Vegas would be such a piece of cake in a suburban. Oh my gosh, it would be so easy. You've got the kids like on their IV of, of media. <laughs> Now, from the driver's perspective, the fact that they have not only added independent rear suspension, but you can get magnetic ride control and air suspension gives it a lot more feeling of control over the road. Um, the adaptive suspension can stiffen up, it can soften down. Uh, you can raise it or lower it in terms of ride height if you were in a little bit of an off-road situation or if you're loading it up. Um, and speaking of loading, a huge improvement to this vehicle now that the independent rear suspension frees up all that space that was taken up by the differential, uh, they dropped the cargo level 5.3 inches, so it's all flat now when you lower the seats. Uh, it's actually a lot more practical. For the money, you know, this is a car that you can own for the next 15 years and get a whole ton of usage out of. You don't have to go for the full hog 6.2 liter V8. There's a 5.3 liter gas engine, and there's a new three liter Duramax diesel, which is probably actually a really smart choice because it's got a lot of torque, and it's supposed to run very smoothly. I haven't driven it yet, but it sounds good on paper. But I think you know what really happens with a vehicle like the Suburban is, over the years, you kind of bond with it, and you develop this relationship, and that almost evolves into a kind of love, you know? It's like, you don't love it because it's flashy, or you don't love it because it's so exceptionally sexy. You love it because it's reliable, because it never lets you down, because it does a job really well, and because it's, you know, really practical. I'm not gonna be offended by that. <laughs> I wasn't even going there. But now that you put it that way. Braking test. Ah! Ooh, it's big on the road. I feel like I take up a lot of room. And if you have space, then you can take it up. You can move what you need to move. It's amazing for that. It does everything very well. I think this is a time for true confessions. What's that? What car did you drive for a little while? It's true. I had a small fling with your parents' Navigator. Lincoln Navigator. Yeah, baby. And like the Navigator, this car is really honest in what it's trying to be. Mm -hmm. And and unlike the Navigator, it does so in a, I don't like this word, classy sort of way. <laughs> you never say classy. But it's true, you know, the captain of industry type, um, she wouldn't be put off by this car. She could take it to, you know, Montana or wherever. You know, I don't disagree. You could see this at the ramp at your FBO. You could see it at the equestrian center, like you said. It is not valet embarrassing. It's not valet embarrassing. We all know what that is. Yeah, we've been there, done that. Um, and let's talk about the interior a little bit more. You had some really good points about the stitching. The interior has a lot of detail if you look closely. There's stitching, there's piping. Yeah, you're not going to be confusing this with a quarter million dollar car or anything, but I think what redeems it, in a sense, is that honesty that you talked about. Um, in my opinion, it feels like the car um, has been gradually improved over the years to the point where everything works. Everything is just kind of sorted out. You know where everything should be. It's very intuitive. It feels very natural. It's perfected. They and it's perfected not, this. Yeah, totally. And it's not trying to be something that it's not. And that's something that I'm actually really big on. I'm really big on personality and um, having an earnestness to your functionality. Um, could it do a few things better? Sure. I mean, like what else? When I was driving, I, w I really felt like the ride control was good, the body control was good, but when I came to make a U-turn, it would be really great if it had four-wheel steering. Um, it could give it a lot more uh, maneuverability at low speeds. It feels big when you're trying to park it. It feels huge when you're trying to make a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just feels huge. I mean, this is a big behemoth of a car, but the person that wants this car wants it because it's so big. Um, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, I think it's great that this car exists because it is one of the most satisfying Chevrolet products I've experienced recently. It's civilized. Um, you know, I mean, the Corvette is an icon, the Camaro is an icon, and Suburban has been around way longer than both of those. That's weird. I wouldn't have known that. 
No, it's pretty impressive actually. The whole 85 year thing is mind blowing. Now here's a fun fact for you. When the Suburban debuted in 1935, it had 115 cubic feet of space in the back, which is massive. It was a bus. This has 144 cubic feet, but that's so much further down the road in terms of what you have to have in terms of safety and structure and things that, you know, airbags, things that take up space and folding seats and everything. I mean, that gives you some perspective on the whole big car genre that America essentially invented. This car is for big open spaces. I think where it would really be difficult is in small spaces. In you know, it's called the suburban for a reason. It's not really meant for those tightly uh, compact urban settings. So it's not going to do well in Cortona, is that what you're saying? I was going there. <laughs> No. Might even be tricky in New York unless you were being driven in it. And you know, if you're being driven in it, you're probably a VVVIP. So, like you were saying, I mean, this is the kind of car that has a certain sense of occasion for somebody who does not want to stand out. You know, if you're being driven in this car, uh, you could be a government official, you could be a diplomat, you could be uh, in the military. I mean, there's so many applications for this vehicle that are so specific to a certain kind of utility. And it's not unpleasant to drive. It's pleasant to drive. I feel every inch of its size, but that's just my bias. I think that if you are the person that wants to move this much material and people and whatever, it's really easy to drive. Okay. I really actually like this panoramic sunroof and wish we'd opened it earlier because it just kind of opens up the whole experience. Yeah, it takes the cavernous feel out of it. You know what occurred to me? Mm-hmm. That we just like cars. <laughs> you speak the truth. You know, I think there's something there. It's like we go in really skeptical and say, oh, this is stupid. It's a wall. It's a monolith. This thing is like a moving building. But you know what? Let's go to Vegas. Totally. Let's go. Let's drive cross country. Let's take it. We're like the worst car reviewers because we <laughs> like everything. <laughs> Here I was apologizing to Chevrolet in the beginning, and then I end up saying, like, I actually really like it. Uh, but it feels authentic. I mean, there's really something to be said for a vehicle that feels like it's just, it is what it is, you know what it is, and you... It's always been that way. It's always been that way. You, you can count on it, people it, who buy this car you can't count say on that it. about quite a few vehicles. I mean, I'm going to say that that last bit that they did with this iteration was a long time coming and it takes it leapfrogging forward in terms of advancement because having independent rear suspension just makes it that much more sophisticated and normal. This is like more like a normal car. You're not riding like a truck, you know, it is comfortable, it is smooth, it is maneuverable, and it just works. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the 2021 Chevrolet Suburban. We liked it more than we thought we, we would. We really did for small car people. <laughs> People who cut like sports cars and small cars. People who could fit our car in this car yes. with us. Shockingly, we come around. Uh, it's a very impressive achievement. Bravo Chevrolet. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have fun out there, guys. Suck it in. So there you have it. The 2021 Chevrolet Suburban. Rather well done, Chevy. I gotta say, you know. This is, okay, if you can stay off the center. Yeah, I know, I know. So other than it's big and it's big, what do we have to say about this car? So you wanna, can you want to see my can can and see if it looks too raunchy? I'm sure if you think it's okay, it's okay. Well, I can't see the I said I said I can do the can. I said I can do the can can. So I just went like. Oh, that's fine. Sorry. You know, it really makes you think about our relationships to our vehicles because we made a snap judgment when we got into this thing. And we were so ready to knock. I don't know what you mean, weirdo.